Okay, uh, I will uh, present my my best comparison in the oh, 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 OGK curation grant. Uh, first, I I will to talk about my research topic. I work with entomology um, and ecology, and I work in main in two main areas: in the system, systematic. Uh, I work with taxonomy and classification. This includes description of new species, uh, phylogeny and evolution. That includes the study, the evolutionary relationships between these species and the species delimitation. That study uh, that the, uh, the identification of these species. The another area I am work is on diversity and ecology, what I study, species diversity and distribution, and species inventory and monitoring. But this, uh, this, this, uh, uh, these two areas are a relationship. If I work, my grant focuses in these two areas. Particularly, I work it, uh, focused in species delimitation and species inventories and monitoring. E, I focus in my, my grant in the research field in ecology and biodiversity. Uh, we do basic topics. First, uh, do basic inspiration topics. Global biodiversity crisis, uh, uh, biodiversity declining rapidly throughout the, uh, the world. E, the second topic is taxonomic impediment. We, we have less gaps in the species diversity knowledge. It is because we have a uh, few training specialists for study this, uh, this, uh, and, uh, this diversity. Because this uh, were development uh, DNA basis tool for studying the biodiversity. My research problem was biodiversity inventor inventories with DNA basic tool. It, one of the first uh, in, uh, development uh, DNA, DNA basic tool for biodiversity inventories was the, was the DNA barcoding. In this case, it's a uh, diagnostic technique that used a short DNA sequence for identification, uh, for species identification. In this case, the, the tool uh, is uh, simple. Uh, we have a DNA, a DNA sequence, the several species. And we study, uh, uh, we study the little difference in this DNA sequence. It will, it, we, uh, we estimate the this difference in genetic distance percent. This genetic distance uh, suppose uh, the genetic distance inside the species is lower than genetic distance between the species. In this gap between genetic inside the species in distance between the species is knowledge how barcoding gap. But this barcoding gap not always is present in all uh, study groups because, because we have uh, we, we can uh, many taxonomic impediments. We have many species to describe. In the in the world, uh, we are describing around two million species. In the more conservative estimates talk about the 10, uh, 10 million uh, species. Yes, we have how many species to describe. Yes, the, this DNA basis too, it focuses to take uh, this taxonomic impediment. For this study, this research problem, I developed uh, four templates. Uh, one field the template about the describing the quality properties uh, of the manuscript. 
the second one uh, talking about the geographic scale uh, of the uh, study uh, e, uh, e the third one and fourth one talking about the genetic distance inside the species e between the species uh, the templates where for the templates i use it the the properties i use it the oncology pro, uh, the oncology for defining the properties in this case for example uh, taxonomy defining biological taxonomy uh, DNA sequencing technology uh, location i use a uh, geographic scale template uh, genetic uh, distance inside the species in genetic distance between the species the first comparison was studying uh, diptera one group insects that include uh, included a uh, flies and mosquitoes only for for clarify uh, uh, what is the diptera uh, in this comparison i studied the uh, genetic variation uh, the this using barcoding region in different studies around the world in diptera in different groups this comparison, I uh, I use the genetic distance into the specific and between species, and I uh, uh, visualizing the comparison. We can see that the almost um, of studies, the genetic distance inside the species is higher than genetic distance between species, and in respect results. For my second comparison, I focus it on a, a more on a local group, uh, yeah, local studies, yeah, I focus it specifically in mosquitoes. In this, I am um, uh, this uh, comparisons and study uh, equal uh, the genetic distance inside the, the, the species and between the species, and uh, equally. I found the genetic dis distance inside the species is upper than genetic distance inside uh, between the species. But in the something can be bad. In this case, now is bad. This meaning we have many species to describe, many undescribed species in different places of the world. Uh, okay. Uh, I want to thank you. I I thank you for the op opportunity for uh, participation in this grant. I learned too much. Uh, see uh, other perspective for approximation. The the knowledge uh, was uh, really improved for me. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mario, for this wonderful uh, presentation. I will uh, 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 stop. Uh, OK. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for this wonderful presentation. I especially like that you even reused ontology terms from existing ontologies. So that's a really nice touch. Yeah, it well, uh, was difficult for me find for, because how many ontologies found the same term. was difficult yeah. to find the ontologies. Yeah. Yeah, I can guess. Uh, I can imagine that. Yes, uh, that's always uh, uh, not so easy. Um, any questions from the audience? Yes, I do have a question. Yes, Enrique. Uh, I don't know if it, this is the right moment for it, but uh, okay. Uh, if we read the definition of the ORKG, it says the the one that says, says shows in the main page. Let me just put my video here. It says the ORKG research knowledge graph is aimed to describe research papers in a structured manner. You will still have the same definition right now, or because somehow, from my point of view, which is uh, it's a little bit better or more illustrated now than it was uh, five months ago. Um, the, 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 we, uh, the curators use this knowledge graph structure with the 
not only different ways, we, we do different ideas of what to do with it. I, I would think I maybe I should not uh, put it this way. In my personal view, I think I'm very close to a strictly definition that I just read a moment ago, description of papers and that. But I think uh, some of the curators use uh, really have a completely different view what they can use this for. So uh, do you still will define it this way or maybe this way that you is there implies many things? Uh, subtle, in a subtle way, this implies many things as the process of learning that all the curators show up. Can you comment on that? So to whom was that question now? To any of the curator team fellows, friends. <laughs> so I think actually, um, depending on who you ask, you will get a different answer. So maybe Lars, if you like to go first, I also like to comment on it. <laughs> so I think uh, most of you have used templates and with the templates, um, <laughs> you structure your the knowledge that you add to the ORKG in a, a comparable way in a well basically you use a graph pattern and populate this pattern with your data and with uh, if you follow this approach then all your your con uh, contributions will have the follow the same basic uh, modeling scheme which makes it machine actionable the data. So the data can be compared by a machine. Of course, the problem is, uh, and that's an open question for the OIKG, um, you, Enrique, may have used different templates than Mario has used, which is in this case not a big problem because you are in very different fields and domains. Um, but it, just imagine Mario would also be in the same domain as you, and he would use a different template then the contents that you two would provide to the or add to the ORKG would not be interoperable. And that's an open issue. But besides that, as long as both of you would use the same template, you could agree on a temp on, on the same templates or set of templates, the contents that you add to the ORKG would be comparable, would be interoperable for the machine. Since we, as, uh, as developers of the ORKG, are not experts in all domains, and each domain also is very diverse. So I'm a biologist. I could follow a lot of what Mario was presenting because that's also my background. So I guess we too could agree on templates and uh, could develop them, but I'm not an expert in physics, so it's I have a hard time to to develop templates with you, uh, Enrique, because I lack the background. So we cannot, uh, as an OKG team, we cannot um, provide the templates for all the domains and all the different topics with e within each domain. So we have to ask the users to contribute to these templates. And the idea that we have is with the observer uh, with the observatories is that observatories could recommend certain the use of certain templates within their domain and provide best practices for adding uh, contents for a certain domain in the ORKG that could be followed by other users. So that's our our um, current uh, strategy for getting the data in a structured and interoperable way in the OKG with uh, increase of, of users and increase of, uh, of observatories, we hope that we could reach that goal. Um, yeah, so maybe um, I also comment then, so uh, I agree with Lars, uh, so that's a good thing. Um, and maybe I can also add to say, so I think the description of having structured paper descriptions is still relevant, right? So um, 
that's in the end what you're doing also if you create a comparison because it's based on those paper descriptions um but we have we have quite a lot of different angles uh, in the orkg so if you if your goal is to create a comparison a structured comparison um it's very different from if you try to describe scientific concepts in a structured manner uh, and so that's why the structured paper descriptions are relevant, but maybe not for all use cases. So if you just consider ORKG as an infrastructure for scholarly data that is machine actionable, you can add a lot of terms there. So you can say it should be comparable, interoperable, um, structured, um, and everything is relevant then. But I think what we are trying to find out currently is um, maybe also what what would be most helpful for, for for researchers, right? So what kind of use cases are there? And I think maybe a comparison is a kind of use case. So if you have structured data, then it's easier to create uh, structured overviews in forms of comparisons. Um, but maybe later we will come up with other use cases. Um, and then we might change uh, yeah, our description, like uh, we want structured paper descriptions. I, by the way, hope you can hear me well. Um, they're cleaning the street out there. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, that's what I had to say about it. Be before we continue with this discussion, I have to leave in, in some minutes because I have an another call. Um, but I want to ask Mario. Uh, so we're, we should still discuss his presentation. <laughs> oh, um, sorry. So, um, what was the, did you have a general workflow? How you approached adding uh, or, or creating a new comparison? Uh, general workflow, uh, uh, I, uh, I filled uh, the template. I uh, divided the templates for describing the, the qualitative properties about the manuscripts. Yeah, another template for describing the quantitative properties. Mm -hmm. I, my workflow was this, but uh, I see different manuscripts don't report the same information. This was the, the difficult part about the, the included manuscript. It, it was interesting to see how inside one area, in a bubble, inside one research area, we can communicate uniformly the, the information for, for the others. Well, it's really interesting. And did you have a favorite tool besides the templates that you used uh, in the ORKG? Templates? Ah, I don't use uh, import tables. I, I use only templates uh, for in the most difficult part for find the oncology for the each pro property. Mm -hmm. But no, I the design after the the design the first template the net one was easy to design. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thanks again, Mario. 